Hey guys, Lord Naren White here, the Holy Ghost, the one true God. Back with you with the next video in my Daily Diary series. As usual, before I discuss what I have achieved since yesterday's Daily Diary video, I want to read you a chapter from the Bible. Today it will be the second book of Moses called Exodus, chapter 34. And the Lord said unto Moses, Hew thee two tablets of stone like unto the first. And I will write upon these tablets the words that were in the first tablets which thou breakest. And be ready in the morning, and come up in the morning unto Mount Sinai, and present thyself there to me in the top of the mount. And no man shall come up with thee, neither let any man be seen throughout all the mount. Neither let the flocks nor herds feed before that mount. He hewed two tablets of stone like unto the first. And Moses rose up early in the morning, and went up unto Mount Sinai, as the Lord had commanded him, and took in his hand the two tablets of stone. And the Lord descended in the cloud, and stood there with him there, and proclaimed the name of the Lord. And the Lord passed by before him, and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering, and abundant in goodness and truth keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, and that will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children, and upon the children's children, unto the third and the fourth generation, unto the third and to the fourth generation. And Moses made haste and bowed his head toward the earth, and worshipped. And he said, If now I found, have found grace in thy sight, O Lord, let my Lord, I pray thee, go among us, for it is a stiff-necked people, and pardon our iniquity and sin, and take us for thine inheritance. And he said, Behold, I make a covenant before all thy people. I will do marvels, such as have not been done in all the earth, nor in any nation, and all the people among which thou art shall see the work of the Lord, for it is a terrible thing that I will do with thee. Observe thou that which I command thee this day. Behold, I drive out before thee the Amorite, and the Canaanite, and the Hittite, and the Perizzite, and the Hivite, and the Jebusite. Take heed to thyself, lest thou make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land, whither thou goest, lest it be for a snare in the midst of thee. But ye shall destroy their altars, break their images, and cut down their groves. For thou shalt worship no other god, for the Lord, whose name is Jealous, is a jealous God, lest thou make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land, and they go a whoring after their gods, and do sacrifice unto their gods, and one call thee, and thou eat of his sacrifice, and thou take of their daughters unto thy sons, and their daughters go a whoring after their gods, and make thy sons go a whoring after their gods. Thou shalt th make thee no molten gods. The feast of unleavened bread shalt thou keep. Seven days thou shalt eat unleavened bread, as I commanded thee in the time of the month Abib. For in the month Abib thou camest out of Egypt, out from Egypt. All that openeth the matrix is mine. And every firstling among thy cattle, whether ox or sheep, that is male. But the firstling of an ass thou shalt redeem with the lamb, and if thou redeem him not, then shalt thou break his neck. All the firstborn of thy son shall re thou shalt redeem, and none shall appear before me empty. Six days thou shalt work, but in the seventh day thou shalt rest, in earing time and in harvest thou shalt rest, and thou shalt observe the feast of weeks of the first fruits of wheat harvest, and the feast of ingathering at the year's end. Thrice in the year shall all your men and children appear before the Lord God, the God of Israel. For I will cast out the nations before thee, and enlarge thy borders. Neither shall any man desire thy land, when thou shalt go up to appear before the Lord thy God thrice in the year. Thou shalt not offer the blood of my sacrifice with leaven, neither shall the sacrifice of the feast of the Passover be left unto the morning. The first of the first fruits of thy land thou shalt bring unto the house of the Lord thy God. Thou shalt not seethe a kid in his mother's milk. And the Lord said unto Moses, Write thou these words, for after the tenor of these words I have made a covenant with thee and with Israel, 
and he was there and he was there with the Lord forty days and forty nights. He did neither eat bread nor drink water, and he wrote upon the tablets the words of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. And it came to pass when Moses came down from Mount Sinai, that the two when the with the two tablets of testimony in Moses' hand, when he came down from the mount, that Moses wist not the skin of his face, shone while he talked with them with him. And when Moses and all the children of Israel saw Moses, behold the skin of his face shone, and they were afraid to come nigh him. And Moses called unto them, and Aaron and all the rulers of the congregation returned unto him, and Moses talked with them. And afterward all the children of Israel came nigh, and he gave them in commandment all that the Lord hath spoken with him in Mount Sinai. And till Moses had done speaking with them, he put a veil on his face. But when Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he took the veil off until he came out. And he came out and spake unto the children of Israel that which he was commanded. And the children of Israel saw the face of Moses, that the skin of Moses' face shone. And Moses put the veil upon his face again, until he went in to speak with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This is amazing. Um, I want to go ahead and comment on a few things here. Uh, let's start with what first came to my mind when I was reading this chapter, which is you see here, For thou shalt worship in Exodus thirty four fourteen, For thou shalt worship no other God, for the Lord, whose name is Jealous, is a jealous God. Previously in this section here, the Lord discusses a passage with the Spirit of God right here. At Exodus 31, 3, and I have filled him with Lord Naren White. You know, I, I've never... I'm trying to find the right way to articulate my thought here. I think the only men I would want to speak about the spirit of like having some sort of... Ethos. Having the, the ethos to say they have achieved more in history than me are the father and the son and the way the father says this line here he says and i have filled him with the spirit of god giving him the emphasis that he filled bezalel with lord naren white that it was not lord naren white who filled them out of my, out of you know the you know the, the goodness of my spirit but that he does so and again jesus does the same thing again he says to the the apostles receive ye the holy spirit so Jesus takes an ownership again of what it means to have the Spirit indwell them. That's my understanding. The word is indwelling. When one is one is filled with the Holy Spirit, that they feel that fire that I have within myself of infinity. So really, that's it. Those are the only two men I want to have. You know, you know that 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 I feel comfortable um, with them speaking about uh, that they told the Holy Spirit or, or they, you know, I'm not sure that they have filled someone with the Holy Spirit or something like that. Okay, so next. Um, very powerfully here. Take a look here. At the end of the chapter. And afterward all the children of Israel came nigh, and he gave them in commandment all that the Lord had spoken with him in Mount Sinai. Until Moses had done speaking with them, he put a veil on his face. So the Lord puts a veil on his face. And then... But when Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he took the veil off until he came out. And he came out and spake unto the children of Israel that which was commanded. And then the, and the children of Israel saw the face of Moses, that the skin of Moses' face, Moses who was born fair, as Saint, as a, and Moses was exceeding fair. I believe St. Stephen says this. In Acts of the Apostles, again, Moses is level two. He has smooth skin. He can give seed, things like this. So he he's a blessed man. He's a prophet. And again, Saint Stephen says in Acts of the Apostles, and I, I want to make sure I'm, I'm not reading this incorrectly. In which time Moses was born, Acts seven twenty, in which time Moses was born and was exceeding fair. 
And so Moses, who's already exceeding fair, and the children of Israel, Exodus now 34, 35, and the children of Israel saw the face of Moses, that the skin of Moses' face shone, and Moses put the veil upon his face again until he went in to speak with him. I could have misinterpreted this. I need to understand this. It could be Moses whose face is shining because of the good works he's done. I want to make sure I'm understanding this correctly. Wow, yeah. Moses, this is it. This is a credit to Moses. It's Moses' face who shines here. And afterward the children of Israel came nigh, and, and he gave them in commandment all that the Lord had spoken with him in Mount Sinai. So this is another credit to Moses, which actually it doubles with what St. Stephen says, which is even more beautiful because that's actually probably the correct emphasis. Moses, who is exceeding fair, now his face is going to shine. It says here, until Moses had done speaking with them, he put a veil on his face. So he puts a veil on his own face, but when he goes to speak before the Lord, he takes the veil off until he came, came out. And he came out and spake unto the children of Israel that which he was commanded. And the children of Israel saw, that the, saw the face of Moses, that the skin of Moses' face shone, showing his spiritual greatness. And Moses put the veil upon his face again until he went in to speak with him. And I, I, I want to point it out. I'll interpret this from a Naranjalical perspective. Moses, who is of level two, knows that the only men that can understand him are those in level two, such as Abraham or John the Baptist, and those in level one. So pause and, and hear what I'm saying there for a second. Sure, there are men like Adam who are smooth and, and, and tall and strong, or like Jacob who are smooth and have many sons and um, you know leave a mighty legacy. What I'm saying here is this. Remember that God tells Adam, who lives a thousand years essentially, from thus dust thou art Adam, and unto dust wilt thou return. Because Adam still doesn't, he, he's, he is not capable of grasping how important it is to walk with God without hearing those words, is my interpretation, as, as the God of Nerangelos and the Spirit of God. But Moses, just like Abraham, who hears, he says, Lord, he is but dust, he is your humble servant. That is a man who is from heaven. Well, all these blessings, being blessed to hear the word of God, being able to give seed, being told by God that he will multiply Abraham's seed such that they will be as the sands of the sea. Oh, no, 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 that's, uh, that's, in, that's interpreted correctly. That's actually for, uh, uh, the, uh, <laughs> that's completely uh, uh, incorrect. No, but he says that he will multiply his seed. So all these blessings for Abraham and Abraham tells God, no, he, Abraham is dust and he is but God's humble servant. And John the Baptist, said, John the Baptist, who won the greatest man ever born of women, he says, he says to 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 his, to the, his believers, he says, "May the one that cometh after him, he, he John is not worthy, to, to I think to touch his sandals or something." Those are the prophets. That's how a prophet speaks, that he he has so given his life to God, that there is no other purpose without God. I heard something recently. I was um, I was watching. Uh, uh, it was uh, like I think Trinity Day recently, in some of the Christian um, in Christianity or something like that. I'm not sure what it is. Uh, let me look it up. I think it's called like Trinity Day. It's Trinity Day, yeah, Sunday, June twelfth, and one of the the uh, fathers or pastors or priests. I'm not sure what his title is. He says he says, Lord Jesus Christ, as great as he is. Without the Trinity, he can do nothing. You know what's so funny is that statement sounds like it could be blasphemous, taken out of context. Honestly, that's exactly how I feel. I feel that with my first 24 and a half years on this earth, in just four years walking with God, I know now that, you know, it too specifically the Trinity, I should say, you know, because I was still in the in the process of accepting Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Although I was coming closer to Jesus, I can't say I fully had said, okay, Jesus is 
the one true God. He is my Lord and Savior until two years ago. It feels like with Christ, I can do all things. And I truly also believe that without, I mean, without the Trinity, I can do nothing. And that kind of unity that is seen in level one is so powerful because I would never leave the Father and Son. And whatever they say about me or to me or they give, they give me as a vision, um, I, I adhere to them. Because not only do I love them so much, but without them I can do nothing. And I mention that because when you look at this passage here with Moses, I, 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 I say all of that to point out the symbolism of the veil and from the Nanjalka interpretation. He takes the he puts the veil on, and Moses had done speaking with them, he put a veil on his face. Until he had done speaking with them, he put a veil on his face. So he covers his face when he talks with these people, the, uh, the multitude. But when Moses goes before the Lord, he takes the veil off. So my interpretation as the God of Naranjalism is he knows that God understands him. That God knows the sacrifice it takes to fight through all that persecution in Egypt and to deliver his people into a land flowing with milk and honey. And Moses also knows that the Spirit of God understands the kind of sacrifice it takes. That everything can go. You see here the whole time the Spirit of God is with Bezalel. Again, the passage reads, as is written here, to devise, and he has filled him with the Spirit of, of God in wisdom and in understanding and in knowledge and all manner of workmanships, to devise cunning works to work in gold and in silver and in brass, and in cutting of stones to set them, and in carving of timber to work in all manner of workmanship. So he's doing, that. So that's what I'm doing there, is I'm building things for these people, alongside Bezalel and the other builders. Because the immediate danger, of which of course, uh, once Moses passes away, which we will eventually read, I will fight alongside Joshua, son of Nun. So I will, I will take a more fighting role at that point in time. Right now we're building. We're building things for the people. And Moses knows, he puts the veil on for the people because they, look how, look how the God, God says, lest thou make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land and they go whoring after their gods and do sacrifice unto their gods and one call thee and thou eat of his sacrifice and thou take of their daughters unto thy sons and their daughters go whoring after their gods and make thy sons go whoring after their gods. Thou shalt make thee no molten gods. God, remember, God knows before the flood if man's thought, thoughts were only continually evil. He knows the evil thoughts that the multitude is having. Why worship Father? Now, I'm, okay, I don't want to. I don't want to put. You know, just pretend I know. But as an example, of these people thousands of years ago, they may have said something like, you know, thought something like, why not just worship the gold? Because with the gold you can buy something. But where is God? They can't see Him. But God is there, and His name is jealous, and He is a jealous God. And so. Moses puts that veil on in front of them. My interpretation is the Naranjalkal, as the God of Naranjal says. All these levels below Moses, from Adam and down, they don't understand what it means to be a prophet. But God understands. Level one and level two, they understand what it takes, the sacrifice it takes. That everything sensual, everything earthly, everything heathen, or excuse me, hedonistic, can be sacrificed. All these wronged, sinful desires that make men and women, as the God says, go whoring after other gods. They can be sacrificed. What must stay is the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. And so, uh, with that, I'll go ahead and end the Bible uh, reading there for today. Now, now, transition over to what I have achieved since yesterday's Daily Diary video. Since yesterday's Daily Diary video, I worked my software developer job. Excuse me. A bug. I uploaded and scheduled my core workout video from 6.15.22. I uploaded and scheduled my legs workout video from 6.16.22. I uploaded and scheduled my daily diet video from 6.15.22. And I have created this video, and I will upload and schedule this daily diet video from 6.16.22. And with no further achievements since yesterday's daily diet video, I want to say thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed. Please like, comment, and subscribe, as it greatly helps the channel. Light be with you all. Take care, and thanks again.